Hey everybody, welcome. We are starting a video series on game theory and this is the first video in that video series. And in this video we're going to talk about a key concept of game theory, something we want to embrace from the onset as we study the concept of game theory. But before I get to it, let me just tell you a little bit about game theory. Game theory is a field of economics and other disciplines in which we look at interdependencies and really the behaviors and decisions people make when they are in interdependent relationships with others. So here's the idea. What is an inter interdependency? It's a situation in which my outcomes, my payoffs are not just based on my own decisions or strategies that I follow, but are also based on the decisions and strategies of others. And of course the opposite is true. The outcomes of others is based not just on their own decisions or strategies they follow, but on the decisions and strategies I make. See the interdependency right there? That's the interdependency and that's what game theory is focused on studying, is those interdependent relationships and the decisions and behaviors that we make in face of them. Now, as we study game theory, the thing that we want to embrace from the onset that we want to really keep with us as we study every single element of game theory is the idea that we want to be able to always put ourselves in the shoes of others and see the world through their eyes. Anytime we're presented with a game, it is so important that we look at every player in the game, whether we're in the game or not, every player in the game and see the world through their eyes, through their perspective. It's so key for making rational decisions. So I'm going to motivate this with a riddle. Okay, I'm going to stylize this riddle up for you, but anyhow, I hope you find it interesting and I hope you really take away this key concept of how important it is to put yourselves in the shoes of others and see the world through their eyes in order to make rational, logical decisions. So here comes the riddle. We've got this prison. We'll say this prison only kind of houses people that had serious crimes. And we're going to, again, stylize things up. We're going to say everybody in this prison is serving out a 20-year sentence. And the guards in this prison like to have a little bit of fun, if you will, with prisoners that are entering into the last year of their sentence. And we're going to say on this particular day, there are three prisoners, you can see them right here on my board, that are entering into the last year of their sentence. So remember, they've all served 19 years and they've got one more year to go. Now, what the guards do is on this particular day they go and they grab these three prisoners and they bring them into a room, okay? And what those prisoners see in front of them are three blue hats and two red hats. And here's what the guards say. Now I want you to understand, again, again this is a riddle, so whatever the guards say, the prisoners believe to be true. Like, this is stuff the guards have done year after year. They've seen this at play, and they kind of know the guards are going to be true to whatever the outcome is. Just something to keep in mind as we do this, okay? So, three prisoners, three blue hats, two red hats, and the guards tell the prisoners the following. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to blindfold each of you and put a hat on your head. Now, one by one, we're going to undo your blindfold, one by one, allow you to look at the other two prisoners, and then you can decide whether to guess the color of the hat on your head or not. If you guess the right color of the hat on your head, guess what? You get to go free today. But if you guess wrong, you're going to start your 20-year sentence over from the beginning. But there's another option. You don't have to guess at all. And if you don't guess at all, no problem. Head back out into the yard, finish your final year. Now, there's one interesting twist to this particular day, and that is the third prisoner is blind. I don't, you know, whether or not we put the blindfold on doesn't really matter. The third prisoner is truly blind, okay? So here we go. We got three prisoners, and they blindfold them all, or the first two, doesn't matter. But they blindfold them, and they put a hat on each one of them. And then it is important that we understand, of course, the remaining hats are taken out of the room, okay? Now, they unblindfold the first prisoner. Okay, and the first prisoner, of course, looks at the other prisoners, thinks, mm -hmm. looks again, ponders, and then says, I'm not going to guess. I'm going to finish out my final year. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to guess. The guards say, okay, fine. You know, whether or not they re-blindfold him, it doesn't matter that much, but maybe kind of think they re-blindfold him. He's not allowed to communicate with anybody else in any way. The guards have made that perfectly clear. Now, they unblindfold the second prisoner. The second prisoner, 
Hmm. Looks over. Thanks. Thanks again. No, I'm not going to guess. I'm just going to serve out that final year. Now, at this point, the guards kind of start to laugh and say, okay, all right, guys, let's head back out in the yard. Why? Because the third prisoner is blind. The third prisoner can't see the hats on the other two people. So the guards are thinking, okay, we're done. Let's uh, head back out into the yard. And the third prisoner says, wait a second, you didn't ask me. And the guards are like, yeah, we didn't ask you. You do know the consequences, right? If you guess wrong, you're going to restart your entire sentence again and serve out the full 20 years. If you guess right, yeah, you get out today. But if you don't guess at all, you only have one more year to go. And this third prisoner says to the guards, I'm not going to guess. I'm going to tell you the color of the hat on my head. So what is the color of the hat on the third prisoner's head? And he's saying he's not guessing. He knows rationally, logically, he knows the color of the hat that is on his head. Why? Because he's put himself in the shoes of the other peoples, uh, <laughs> into the shoes of the other prisoners and seen the world through their eyes. So what do I mean by that? He puts himself into prisoner one. He says, you know what? Prisoner one, here's what I know. If prisoner one would have seen red and red, right? Remember, three blues, two reds. If prisoner one would have seen red and red, what would prisoner one have said? got a blue hat. I know I've got a blue hat. So prisoner three just found something out. Prisoner two and prisoner three do not both have red hats. Now it's not just prisoner three that found that out. Prisoner two found that out too. And by the way, this is not a big leap, right? All of us can understand if there are three blue hats and two red hats. If prisoner one would have seen red and red, they would have said they had a blue hat. We know that for sure, right? That's pretty straightforward. We can pretty much assume this is big stuff for Prisoner 2. Prisoner 2 knows that too. So when I did Prisoner 2, I did something kind of interesting. I kind of moved to the kind of middle, if you will. And I only looked at Prisoner 3. I didn't look back at Prisoner 1 at all. I only looked at Prisoner 3. Thought, pondered, looked again, thought, pondered. I'm not going to guess. You see... Here's the situation. If prisoner two would have seen a red hat on prisoner three, what would that mean? Well, again, prisoner two knows prisoner one did not see red hat and red hat, right? That's for sure. So if prisoner two would have seen a red hat, that would have meant prisoner two has to be wearing a blue hat. When prisoner two said, I'm not gonna guess, I'm not gonna say, I'm not, I'm not gonna take a shot on this, it told Prisoner 3 something incredibly important. It said, hey, Prisoner 3, you are not wearing a red hat. Prisoner 3, you're wearing a blue hat. And that's why Prisoner 3, after putting himself in the shoes of the other prisoners, being rational, being logical, seeing the world through their eyes, said, I'm not going to guess. I'm going to tell you the color of the hat on my head. And he said, that color is blue. And that's exactly what he was wearing. And that day, that third prisoner was let go of that prison and walked out a free man. Again, central theme, central concept of study game theory. We've got to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of others and see the world through their eyes when analyzing any game ever. All right, we'll see you in the next video.